this is Mark and Julie from RV Love, and we're coming at you from Garden of the Gods RV Resort, which is the campground we have spent the single longest stay in all six years of our full-time travel. So we're getting ready to leave, so we want to share a bit about why we were here so long and why we chose this particular location, so stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. Again, this is Julia Mark here from RV Love. We're coming at you from beautiful Colorado Springs yes. in Colorado, which was our home state actually before we hit the road full time in our RV in June of 2014. Coincidentally, we just passed our six year on the road anniversary, <laughs> which was pretty cool. But we're here in Colorado Springs. It's right on the border of Colorado Springs and Manitou Springs. And it's, right. we really love this area because it's right next to one of our favorite recreational areas called Garden of the Gods, which is great because we can go on biking, we can go hiking there, actually from the campground that we're staying in. You can mm -hmm. literally walk right in there, which is so close, which is a huge asset for us. And part of the reason we chose that is because we knew we were going to be coming here during the COVID crisis, and we didn't know how strict the restrictions would be and how little we'd be able to move around. So we wanted to be close to something we could know we could get out and enjoy nature without having to get in our car. Don't already know, we spent about five weeks sheltering in place during what we call phase one of the pandemic. And that was in Quartzsite, Arizona. And then as the temperatures were starting to heat up in the desert, it was getting up to 100 degrees. We knew we had to hit some cooler temperatures that were a bit more comfortable in an RV. But this is a place we have stayed at numerous times before. Yeah, I think, so four, I think times, four times, yeah. And we're on a monthly stay rate. They have nightly rates, weekly rates, and they have monthly rates and also seasonal. Yeah. if you're somebody who's staying here for extended periods of time and quite a few people are because they work in the area but that's one of the reasons we chose this campground actually because of the proximity not only to garden of the gods but to the grocery store to the pharmacy to any facilities and amenities that we might need but everything is walking and biking distance yeah which is really great right at this moment we are looking at the beautiful pikes peak which is one of uh, one of the famous 14ers here in colorado <laughs> Yeah, and you can see it right from the park. Mm -hmm. And now that things are starting to open up, you can probably drive up there. Interesting about Pikes Peak, you can drive all the way to the top with your vehicle, all the way to a 14,000 foot peak. And there's a lot to see and do in the area, but let's jump over to a walk and talk we did around the park when we were here about halfway through our stay so that we can show you the RV sites, the cabins and other accommodations and give you some more tips on cool things you can do and see here in Colorado Springs. Well, we're about a month into our two month stay here at Garden of the Gods RV Resort. You can see our campsite behind us here for our 40 foot motorhome. And uh, we're gonna take you on a tour of the RV park today. Uh, the campground itself has about 180 RV sites and about 20 tent sites. Most of those tent sites have electrical hookup and they have been open during this pandemic. Um, the RV sites are Almost all of them are gravel. There are some that are concrete pads, but even the ones that are gravel, many of them do have a concrete patio. All of them are full hookup, so water, sewer, and electric, and they have picnic tables at all of the sites as well. So just gonna turn around a little bit here, and you can see this row that we're on. This is where a lot of people who are staying for seasonals or long-term stays have been here. Uh, us being here for two months is considered a long stay. But a uh, little bit of a slope here in the campground. Mark, do you yeah, want to talk about Yeah, the whole today? campground has a slight slope downhill towards the creek at the bottom of the campground, which means that you might need uh, some leveling blocks to get your RV level. Very, a lot of people are able to get their rigs level without leveling blocks. We did need some on ours because ours backs up sli slightly towards the irrigation ditch behind us, mm -hmm. and our coach doesn't have a lot of leveling capacity. Yeah. The intersection is a little strange, but it is at a light, so that makes it easier. You can see from this aerial shot what it actually looks like, but there are three check-in lanes for you to check in, and then uh, what's pretty funny is a lot of people miss that they need to turn left right there, <laughs> so we get a few people come up our row and have to back out. I would consider the park to be big rig friendly, mm -hmm. um, even though most of the sites are smaller, but the ones that are for larger sites are easy to get in and out of. Uh, it's but, nice tree coverage once these trees finish coming out with the leaves. When we first got here, there was no leaves on the trees, but now they're really blooming out nicely. 
So even though it's big rig friendly, it is limited with the number of big sites. There are some pull through sites, we've got some back end sites, which is what we have, and also some sites that are uh, down here overlooking the river right toward Manitou Springs. Executive pull through section with paved sites. <laughs> You've got a nice uh, Tiffin diesel pusher there, then our coach parked by gorgeous Millennium Prava bus conversion. <laughs> Gorgeous coach. We feel a bit like the worst house on the best block. <laughs> but a lot of the sites are for great for smaller rigs and those smaller sites are going to be the ones that are more likely to be available. This place really books up. Um, when we got here it was early season and in the middle of the pandemic so they were only about 25% occupancy. Mm -hmm. We're told that there are going to be over 80% occupancy come June. Yeah, especially at this time when there's so much uncertainty and a lot of people are saying that they're not traveling as much or traveling as far. So this is very popular with Colorado locals because Colorado is a very outdoorsy, adventurous state. We used to live here before we hit the road in an RV. So you get a lot of locals coming to enjoy the facilities here at the campground because it's in just such a fantastic location. Hello. And while we were just walking by here, uh, on our left there was an event center. They have events and during the summer they often have big groups and they even have some outdoor cooking as well. Mm -hmm. And on our right were some of those tent sites, the ones that have a few of them that have the power hookups. So I mentioned there's a mix of large and smaller sites. There actually probably my best guess would be maybe 50% of the sites can accommodate a rig 40 foot or larger. Here's a, quite a number of those 40 foot sites. Over on the right, there's the dog run and also the kids' playground area. Here in Colorado, we still have some safer protocols with uh, not having the kids on the playground, so that's why that's roped off. And because none of us really know how this is going to pan out over the coming months, and especially in different areas of the country, I think we all just need to be prepared for the fact that not all of the amenities at every place we go are going to be open. So what you see in the video may not be happening when you come here. Take you outside here right now, show you the other tank camping area right by the creek. So they're doing a bit of construction here at the moment. By the time this video is up, that should be finished. But you've got a nice trail there for hiking and running. And you can see the sign over there to Manitou Springs. There is so much to do in this area. And I think that's why they always book out um, and they pretty confident that I think by the time we're in the full swing of things this summer they'll probably book out again so we're glad to be here while it's a little bit quieter right now. Because we had such a long stay and the occupancy was low in the spring we managed to take a look inside the cabins and other accommodations so let's give you a sneak peek at those. This row of small buildings they're called bunkhouses and they have about 15 of those they're really small, really basic. There's no water or anything. They really are just bunk houses. So it looks like a queen bed and two bunk beds and a convertible dinette. Still really basic, but a huge step up from a tent. We're gonna go from the most basic accommodation to one of the nicest accommodations. These escape cottages up here. Bedroom down here. Kind of fun. It feels like a sauna or something like with the wood walls and the wooden benches to sit on. But I like I like the feel of this. And this is actually could accommodate quite a few people because it's got a separate bedroom up here, a bunk room in the back, and then a couch in the living room. It's quite nice and it's been remodeled. It's got granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. Feels like you're in a spa, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Wow, look at this. Four bunks. You could actually Whoa. sleep six people here, plus the sofa. It's pretty cool. So behind me here, you can see there are a couple of resort cottages. They're both occupied at the moment. So unfortunately we can't get in to take a look around, but they look pretty nice. There've been some people in there for a long stay. So they must like it too. Now let's check out one of the garden suites. This is number two. This is really nice. Here's a sofa bed here. You could really spend an extended stay here. You've got everything. A full queen size bed. This is really cute. And a bathtub. Garden studio number one. All of the accommodations are quite different and unique. Even in some of the same style, they can really have variations in the decor and layout. So this has got a small kitchen area over here. Pretty much all you would need for a weekend or even a week. This is a sofa bed, so you could sleep another two people here. 
Nice dining area. This actually looks out to the pool area, which is closed right now, but that would be really nice in the summertime to be able to look out at that view while you're eating. Nice big shower. Dresser with lots of drawers and a view back out to the pool again. In terms of other amenities here, they actually have two swimming pools. They have one right at the front when you first come into the RV park and another one over near the cabins and the bunk houses. And they have three different laundry rooms, three different shop bath houses. The bath then, houses uh, were nice. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. So when you go into the office, they also have a camping store with some RV accessories. They've got ice creams. They've got some postcards and gift items, things like that. They do have propane if you need to fill the propane on your RV and a little arcade area for the kids to be able to, or teenagers, to be able to play in the arcade room. But we really just used the laundry, didn't we? Yeah. Mike used the laundry. I used the laundry, yeah. In, in the time that we've been here, in the 10 weeks, we spent the first two months in one campsite and in the last couple of weeks we decided to extend our stay here because we were having such a nice time and we just wanted to be in one great location that we really enjoyed to be able to host our Hit the Road RV Summit virtual event and so we've actually been in two campsites in the last couple of weeks. One was on a big corner site that was M5 and then now we're in campsite S2 so it's actually been nice moving around campsite within the campground because it, you know we're not used to staying in one place yeah, for an extended period of time. For people who travel as frequently as us it's nice to be able to mix up your stay. It actually feels like you're in a different spot. It does yeah. yeah so that's been great. So we got here in early April just before the last spring storm of the season which was fantastic actually. We knew that was coming and we wanted to be here for that because we know, we know how beautiful Garden of the Gods is when it's coated in snow. So we were actually here for the first few days. It was pretty cold. It got down to the down teens. To the teens yeah. uh -huh. Down to the teens, but we just had the heater running. Uh, we did run through some propane while we were here, but we also had the electric meter. And what did we end up paying for electric for two months here? It was less than 100 bucks. Wasn't yeah. it under 60, I think? It was $54 or yeah. something. But I wouldn't set that expectation for everyone. That was so. what it was for us, yeah. but it was pretty reasonable. We've seen quite a few changes since we've been here. We've seen the seasons change. It's really very summery here now. Uh, definitely getting much busier. I think it was about 20% capacity when we arrived in April. Right. And now we're seeing every weekend this place is almost completely almost, yeah. full so uh, but i think that's just camping in general we're seeing around the country anyway if you like curvy mountain roads and you're in the colorado springs area take the drive up to helen hunt falls it's a really pretty drive and it's pretty close to the cheyenne mountain zoo which we have not been to but uh what we hear is amazing it's the only mountain zoo in the country and so it's pretty cool you actually go for a hike and you're in a zoo but I actually really wish that it was open right now. I'd love to see that. There's some really famous sculptures, big tall metal sculptures in the area, and I can't quite remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll put it down in the video in the in the type at the bottom there. Yeah, and a lot of people that come here love to go see the historic Broadmar Hotel. There's a lot mm. to see and do there when that's open. But we love this area mm -hmm. and we love this campground too because, and Julie mentioned that they have a lot of people that are seasonal or long term, mm. which is an important factor when you're going to stay somewhere during pandemic period because those campgrounds are considered essential services. Right. So they're more likely to be able to stay open. And mm -hmm. a funny little side note on essential services, when we hit the road, Marijuana was an illegal substance and now we're here six years later and it's in considered an essential service and I just thought that was so funny to me. Right. Yeah. So this campground, Garden of the Gods RV Resort, is uh, part of RBC Outdoor Destinations and they have several other properties around the country, all very nice, but actually stayed at their Hot Springs, Arkansas property, which is called Catherine's Landing, which is also on a river. But we've really enjoyed our stay. I'm going to be really sad to leave. I've really, it, this has come to feel a bit like home. I feel very safe. Their protocols for uh, sanitation have been excellent. And that was definitely a criteria in selecting where we wanted to go to. When we left the desert, where we were completely away from everybody, we wanted to make sure that we were going to an RV park that we were very comfortable with. So this has been great. It has. But we're getting ready to pack up and go. It's time to move on. 
I think Cece won't know what to do with those wheels turning. We've been here for 10 <laughs> weeks now. But we've had a really great stay. And uh, this is definitely a place if you're coming through Colorado or you're wanting to visit Colorado. Colorado Springs is a beautiful area to come and visit. So much to see and do. We've left some signed copies of our book, Living the RV Life, in their campground store. If you happen to be here and you want a copy of that, you can uh, go and grab an autographed copy. And uh, yeah. So thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions put them down in the comments below happy to answer them for you and uh, it's time for us to move on to our next destination. That's so, right. so until next time we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road. Ha, 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 ha.